Hey everybody, Sean Holsinger here again from HolsingersFlyShop.com. Today we're bringing you another video and uh, we're featuring Jack Fields in it again from Living the Nymph and he's going to show off some of his uh, new um, electric wool, his dubbing line that he just came out with and we're going to tie a nymph pattern with it. Uh, Jack, what do you use this nymph for? Uh, this is just a good nymph for, it can even be, basically I have a hot spot coming out of a split shuck in the thorax so it's, it's really an attractor nymph but we've worked in some different tone changes in it throughout the fly to give it some good trigger points cool uh, let's get into tie tell, tell us what hook you're going to be tying it on <clears throat> uh, we're tying this on a fire hole 316 size 10 that's good and, uh, and what bead are you using? This is a, a black mat size 8 okay. bead. And what I've found personally, no matter what color you end up with behind the bead, a black thread finishes better with a black mat bead. It hides better, in other words. And you'll see that once we get to the end of the, end of the show here. So we're just going to tie on. And what we're going to do, we're going to move the hook in the vise right now for purposes of where we're going to end up. It'll just make it easier to do the tie at this point. Now we're going to come down to about this point here, which will give us plenty of back in the hook bend for playing the fish because you don't want to encroach too far down into the bend of the hook because when you when a fish gets hooked it's all the way back into this point here and if we have too much material tied into it what will happen is we'll only have a third of that hook, the ho the fish holding part of the hook to play with and on smaller fish that's not too big a deal but you get a hold of a 20 inch fish and four foot of water that's really ripping you, you want as much hook in it as you can get. Right, you don't want just the very flat of the hook to, uh, we don't want to depend on just that part of the hook to hold the fish because more than likely what will happen is you'll have it on just long enough to know it's a big fish. <laughs> <laughs> and they got big because they're smart and they'll, they know how to get away. The tail is pardo, dark pardo. And for nymphs, I like to give a generous amount. Yeah, that's one of the things that I always, you see a lot of guys where Mayfly only has three. Well, I like to know that it's there. So I always add a couple extra. I'm always exactly six or eight. Yep, I haven't met a trout yet that could count. I haven't either. So we'll just kind of size these up. A lot of times you can go to the length of the shank. I've been now for years tying just a little bit shorter than that. And what I'll do is instead of laying the fibers directly like in line with the hook I'll give it off on an angle and then kind of loosen your fingers as you wrap your tie in point and what you'll get is the fibers will splay out for you when you do that see how they kind of splayed out yeah, you got that without creating a ball or anything like that to, to exactly. force them out. Exactly. By laying them across the hook on an angle like that, as you're cinching it down, they roll over the hook and spread for you. So once you've got two or three wraps, we can go ahead and reorient the hook to where we want to go. And then what you want to do is just tie your tail fibers down, break your thread. <laughs> I hit the hook. These uh, 
fire hole hooks are they are stupid sharp. Stupid sharp, that's right. <laughs> Without a doubt. So nothing went anywhere, so we kinda we kinda saved ourselves. And with this being a dub body, we're not real worried about that little lump there. That's all gonna go away. So now we come back to our tie in point. Careful not to wrap too far over where you stop tying the tails in because one or two wraps too far what will happen is you'll end up pushing those tails down and it'll scrunch them down in and you'll lose your you'll lose your spread that you got so dubbing we're going to use for the body is called forestal abyss and it's a blend of black an olive with just a little bit of green ice wing in it. What we're going to do is we'll take this, take a little clump, and we're just going to wisp. Where are we at? You're on this one. Okay, we're just going to wisp some off, just like that. And what will happen? is seeing as how we have two tones of dubbing in this one bag we are going to get a very nice modeled effect just by wrapping forward with our dubbing and because you wisp this and pull it out you're stretching his fibers out and you're almost making it like a like a super fine kind of dub. Exactly. To keep a nice tight skinny body. Yep. So we'll just build our taper to about that point because what we're going to do is we're going to make a hot spot. We're going to make an, a splitting case, a splitting thorax case with a hot spot down inside of it. And that that's kind of a really really cool little thing to do. And it's not hard. So what we'll do is we'll take our turkey You get about three sixteenths or so worth of the fibers. Not behaving for me. And what I'll do, there's a dull side and not really a shiny side, but the one side's matted and the other side's got all the cool looking little furry barbs on it. So what I do is I tie the side that has the color we want down. So when you wrap it and pull it forward, it'll turn up and then the color or the side that we actually want will be facing up. So what you'll do is you'll just take this and lay it right on the side. And I'll, I'll show you where it ends up being. See how it's tied just onto the side of the shank and we leave that lay. The reason we want to use this width of fibers is because once we build the thorax and we pull this forward it's going to skinny up on us. So this is actually going to be reduced by around a third in the end and the end result will be what we want. Because what happens is if you cut off what you think you need for the, the look you want when you pull it and stretch it forward and tie it down, it actually becomes a little bit less than what we're looking for. And I, you, I learned that through trial and error. We come back over here to tie it in at the tip. And you, as you get a grip on it, you can kind of pull it taut to make it behave and stay where we want. So now we're on the side there. And that's more or less what it looks like from the top. One tied on and in on each side. Correct. Get rid of those guys. Now, we're going to want just a little tiny bit of our, our base color dubbing on here now that we got the thorax case in. 
And that's just because we don't want a bear hook up here. We want something to tie to. Now we're going to take some dubbing. It's called Fairy's Breath. It's a light, a very, very light olive with an even lighter colored olive ice wing, ice wing in it. <clears throat> and seeing how this does not have a huge amount of flash in it, what I'll do is I'll work it out. That's about two inches. And what I'll do is I'll take some crystal flash and add to it, which will give us a much brighter hot spot. And adding to it just involves laying one down on top of the other. And what I'll do is I'll take my fingertips and just roll it. And what that'll do is that'll spread out that crystal flash. Once we have it spread out like that, what we want to do is tie it in crystal flash down against the hook. Okay? The reason we do that is because we're going to tie this in and then fold it forward. And when we fold it forward, our crystal flash will then be on top and give us our hot spot. And you can hold that down and tie it in, give it one wrap and keep a loose tension and then you can pull your material back to a point to where then you can then tie it in and you won't have any tags to cut off. And that can be kind of handy too. So now what we're going to do is pull this forward. You can just make sure Everything's where you want it. Get two or three securing wraps on that. Snip it off. Then once you've cut it, I'd like I'll, I'll take one or two wraps just to make sure my tag ends aren't going to do anything bad. To me in the tie. So now we have our hot spot tied in. And we'll take one side of this and bring it forward. And I'll you're just kind of going straight forward with it, not pulling it right. over the top. I'll show you. See how we're just meeting at the middle at the very end behind the bead and not hiding most of that thorac re thoracic region that we're going to create our hot spot with. Just do one or two securing wraps to this. You don't have to go heavy on the wraps. Now just tilt the vise to where you can see what you're doing. Bring the other side over. One or two securing wraps like that. Give it a little tug. And what that'll do is that'll seat your thread down in behind the bead, and that's what we brought that dubbing forward for. Hold on a second. There we go. So now we have both sides pulled forward, and you see how we have that little little hot spot there. That'll be more than enough for a trout to see. I guarantee a trout will see that. Snip off these. One or two wraps. As long as you put your wraps where they need to be and you keep the tension on it, you can get away with a, a minimalist amount of wraps. And you'll learn tension that you can put on your thread on a given size. This is eight, eight off thread. So that little hot spot just screams. See how bright that is? Yeah, it jumps out there. Right, exactly. And, and what helps that is the darkness of the turkey fibers on both sides of it. Right. And it just looks like a little light inside of there. It does. All right, now we're ready to build the collar, or if you like to think of it as the appendages, legs, wiggly little things that makes it look yummy to eat. That's what we're about to do. We're gonna use SLF spiky dubbing. I'm gonna use a dark brown. 
just pull some out of here. And also some olive brown CDC. And we're gonna, what we're going to do is we're going to take both of these and combine them, put them in a dubbing loop, and create a really buggy, bubble trapping thorax. So I'm using a, a tool called the Magic Tool from Mark Pettijohn. What you want to do to prepare the feather is you'll take the fibers, hold the tip, and stroke them out so they're at a 90 to the main stem. And then what we'll do is we'll lay that on the table. And we'll take some of our dubbing. And we're going to, just a little thing that we need to do to prep the dubbing. My hands are like Velcro. I'm a carpenter. What we'll do is we're going to take this out and spread it out and flatten it out. To where it's nice and flat and like translucent because we don't need too much and then what we'll do is we'll lay them on top of the feather on the barbs just like that and we'll take our clamp and trap the feather and CDC all together nice and neat now you just take and cut away the stem. And what we have are the CDC barbs and the dubbing all nice and neatly trapped and ready for the dubbing loop. You want to make sure you have your feather and dubbing right to the edge of the clamp, not in the middle to where you have space on both ends. And that's just so when we put it in a dubbing loop, we can place it in a manner that it's right up against the fly and we don't have to take four or five wraps to actually start using the material we have built into our dubbing loop. So now we'll take our tool. <laughs> Which takes we getting used to. <laughs> and then we'll make our loop. And one thing I want to point out is when you first create a dubbing loop, the end is open down here at the hook. What we want to do is take our, our working thread and wrap around that twice. And what that does, it closes it off and creates a pinch point. And what that does, it helps hold the material in the loop while we're trying to get things ready to, uh, to go. And then what we can do is manually close and open it with our finger when we're getting the material in there. So you just take our clamp, insert it into the thread, give it a couple spins. Once it starts spinning, you don't have to hold onto the thread because now we've, we've got it trapped unless it falls off the loop. In that case, what we do is we grab our handy Hackle pliers. Hackle pliers and finish the job. One must always keep their cool. Yeah. When tying sometimes. You just never know what's going to happen to you. Especially when you're doing it on a video. It's guaranteed to happen. Yeah, when you go live, yeah. you know, it's going to happen. So now we have our dubbing loop with our dubbing and our CDC fibers all encompassed in one. That's a great spiky brush there. That's very nice. What's going to happen to us is inevitably fibers are going to get trapped because we're spinning between two, two pieces of thread. What I'll do is I'll take a brush and I'll just touch because this is like a Velcro. And what that'll do is that grabs all those fibers that are trapped and brings them out. And now you see we have a, a much spikier, much dubbier thorax or dubbing loop ready to go. So now what you do is wrap it around. See that was one wrap and we're ready. What you want to do is you'll take your fibers and you'll tease them rearward like that. As you're wrapping it, that'll do two things for you. It will get your material to behave and go where we want it. 
without having to have them trapped down. Now some are going to get trapped down. You, you can't avoid that when you're working with something like this. Okay, so that is more than enough. So what we'll do is I, I wiggle the thread back and forth just not to trap down any other fibers. Give a little pull. If you know your thread tension breakage point, you can do this and get away with it. I like to pull on this and this because it seats it into the dubbing behind the bead. And you get a, a tighter tie and a fly that's going to last through more trout. finish Time to that off. and what you can do you kind of manipulate it a little bit because we have a hot spot on top of the thorax what I will do is I'll come in here with these scissors and just snip the very top of that off to expose that hot spot and it just shines like a little piece of glass in there. Mm, that's, that's nice. And it still gives you your leggy look. Exactly. Like, yep. Perfect. And all those appendages are just kind of going to go like that all through the water and say, come eat me, I am good to eat. That is a great pattern there. That's uh, some techniques that I haven't showed yet with uh, mixing the CDC and the squirrel dub. That's one of the techniques. And I really like the hot spot in them front, the hot spot on the back there. That's a different technique than I've used in the past too. So, uh, hope you learned a lot from this one. Um, like I said, this is Jack's line of dubbing that he carries that we carry here in the shop. You can find it. It's uh, it's called Electric Wool, and uh, you can also find it on his website and check him out on his Instagram page and his other social media pages. Uh, he's always coming up with some great looking flies. So thanks for coming out and tying with us oh, today, Jack. I really appreciate you having me. Have a good time. And uh, check back. We have other videos featuring Jack. And uh, we'll have some other stuff in the future, I'm sure, with Jack. Probably get on the stream and fish with you, too. Oh, we're so definitely going to do that. We're going to do that for sure. Yeah, for sure. So, thanks for watching, everybody. And uh, don't forget to check us out at the shop at HolsingersFlyShop.com. Thanks again. I'm Sean Holsinger. I'm Jack Fields. Mm -hmm.